Uh, welcome to Backwoods Gourmet. We're here in the Wawa parking lot. You know I uh, love to chase turkeys in the spring. Well, huh. such a bad hunter like I said I'm a terrible hunter and uh, for, especially for turkeys I don't know I just I somehow don't have the knack for it patience for it can't call for crap I don't know what it is um, but seeing those turkeys in the Wawa gas station I mean right in there by the gas station so I uh, started thinking about eating some turkey some wild turkey Oh, I ain't got none. I'll give you a card right up here to our last turkey hunt. Mm, didn't go great. But it was pretty entertaining. So go check out the video. So anyway, we're here at my favorite store and we're gonna buy some uh, fresh organic, a whole half of a turkey breast. And tomorrow, we're gonna take this out to camp, cook it up and show you a great dish. So y'all stay tuned. So, you seen that intro, got me hankering for some turkey. So today, we're going to make a beautiful and tasty Dutch oven dish using turkey. Now, obviously, I had to go get mine at the grocery store because I suck at turkey hunting. But if you don't suck at turkey hunting and you got a nice piece of turkey breast, you're going to want it for this dish. We got out our new uh, Dodge Lodge Dutch oven table. Uh, that was really easy, fast to set up. and. You know, I really don't have a place here to use the Dutch ovens without breaking out our little our little camp grill with the plate and getting wet down on the ground. This is going to make it so much more convenient. I got the collapsible charcoal chimney from Camp Mead right there. Got some coals going already. And that's some of them uh, Royal Oaks. Going to burn real fast. It's going to work out for this dish. It cooks pretty quick. And uh, we're going to have to walk away from it here today and uh, go shoot some sporting clays. So... If you guys are interested in seeing some of that let me know in the comments below i'll also leave you a link in the description all right those coals are almost ready i'm gonna go ahead and just dump them out in one layer right here on the uh lodge and um you know some are just starting some are well lit but we're going to give them a little space in between because I, I need some good heat to get started here I'm gonna go ahead up with the that's our 12 inch lodge Dutch oven and I got the little lodge four-in-one over there I got a place to set my lid all right I'm go ahead and let that heat up a little bit and we're gonna start out with this this is gonna be a mm, saffron turkey and rice with bay scallops are in season right now middle of summertime hey and I wanted to just give you a heads up we are here at uh, Polk Sporting Clays where I'm a member we're out here in the woods of Backwoods Florida so you're gonna hear these guys are starting early this morning so you're gonna hear some shots in the background and we're gonna go have some fun later too we have a little olive oil three four tablespoons 
All right, what I have here is my turkey breast, and I've cut that up into chunks. I left the skin on this one. Of course, if you got your wild turkey, you probably take the skin off. I uh, marinated that in a little Seminole Swamp seasoning, some oregano, some paprika, and a little salt and pepper. And we're just gonna go ahead and dump it. That's about, uh, for a wild turkey, that's gonna be about your whole breast. And that pot's getting hot already. Just gonna spread that out a little bit. Any little bits stick to the bottom, that's just gonna make it better. I'll separate all the chunks. I had them vacuum packed so they're kind of clean together, but man, does that smell good already. Alright, so we're gonna brown these off a little bit, and what's gonna be is a braise. And at the very, very end, I'm gonna put in some base scallops, and that's gonna really set it off. All right, our turkey's browning up nicely since we got all bottom heat down there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get in this bag I've pre-prepared. I have some um, onions, carrots, and Swiss chard stalks. You can also use celery if you don't have those. And I also have some uh, some green onion right out of our garden. That's uh, Swiss chards out of our garden also. Go ahead and I'll just let them start, mix them in there, and let them start getting all happy with the turkey. And we'll put a little seasoning on since we added some ingredients. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of uh, some old swamp, fire in the swamp. A little bit of that on there. A good stir. Right now we only got bottom heat on it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on, let those soften up for a minute, and we'll move on to the next steps. Alright, the last few steps here. Oh man, does that smell awesome. It's two cups of rice. This is long grain parboiled rice. I would suggest using parboiled rice. All right, here we got uh, one package of saffron that's been reconstituted and vacuum packed. Let's see if we can get the actual the goodie is in the juice anyway. All right, two cups of two cups of rice. Might want to stir that in there a little bit, get it all married up with everything. Some of those juices from the saffron, the turkey, the veg. Get on it a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Alright. In comes a quart of chicken stock. Alright. Stir that up. And now it's time to reset our fire a little bit. I did start some more coals over here just in case we need them. Let's go ahead and get the lid back on that. And hopefully she'll come back up to the simmer pretty quick. Alright. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Dutch oven and move it off over here just a little bit. I'll take my tongs and I'll move out some of these on the edges that are burning really good. You know that it does, you know, when you, it's going to kind of choke the airflow off a little bit on some of the middle ones. I'm going to bring these guys over here and I'm going to leave a little ring because we, you know, this is rice so we want to cook at a slow simmer. And this is number 12. You can do that cold counting method if you want. I usually just uh, kind of eyeball it. Seems to be pretty forgiving. I just want it to be about the size of the bottom of the pot, the ring. And I'm going to go ahead and set that pot back on that ring. All right. Now we're just going to go ahead and take the rest of these and just make one solid ring all the way around that rim. Yeah, if I can keep hold of them really well anyway. I find that the cold counting method sometimes doesn't work out 
because your coals are going to be, you know, doing something like this, some of your coals are going to be burnt down more than others. So if you just use that solid ring method, because some of these coals now are only about half the size they were when they started. So A, they're going to burn out faster, and B, you're going to need more, more of them because there's not as much there to burn. And then we do have some more getting started over here on the side to, uh, to fill in if we need to. We'll see how it does here in about five minutes. When we're not back up to the simmer. I'm gonna put a few more full-size fresh lit ones on there. Right, it's been about five minutes ago and give it a check. Just starting to come up to a, just barely a simmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some more coals to the bottom. Let's dump these guys out of the little camp made there. Grab our tongs. I'm gonna feed some of these in around that bottom ring. Maybe four or five. Just to get it coming up to a simmer real good. Try to do that on all, all the sides there. And then we'll go ahead and add a few to the top. Say maybe seven or eight. And we'll check on it here in a minute. It looks like it's getting going too hard. We'll take a few off and set them over to the side. There's seven new ones on the top. All right, every once in a while, just give her a little tap, let those ashes settle. See how she's doing here in a minute. Let's go ahead and give it a check. Okay, yeah, up to a nice simmer now. So what I'm gonna probably do now is go ahead and just take those uh, extras that I put on there off. That rice only needs 20 minutes to cook. So we're gonna go ahead and just put them off to the side again now. And maybe even pull a few of these out of the bottom that we put in there. Just did that uh, just to kind of speed things along for you guys here. Speed this video up here a little bit. Well, let's take them off and uh, set them over to the side. And now, basically I can walk away from this and go have fun. Uh, those coals are only gonna last about another 20 minutes. Okay, so we've had this staying warm. Well, we've been out shooting and man, it looks awesome. So time to heat it back up a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of water back in it. It's absorbed all the broth. Got some more charcoal going right there. We're just gonna bring it up to the simmer. I'm gonna toss some base scallops in. Those are fresh Gulf Coast, Coast uh, base scallops. And as soon as it come up to a simmer, then we're gonna take it off the fire and let the pot finish.
the range and it's getting time. Put the base gallops in a little more Seminole Swamp season. It's just coming up to simmer. Give it a little stir. Lid back on. Man, that smells awesome. Let's give it about another five minutes. Up to simmer and we're ready. We'll serve this up. The guys are ready to eat lunch. guys so no fancy plate up today just uh you know regular paper plate and plastic fork mm, out here at the gun club guys really enjoyed it the scallops done perfectly okay and well they brought those up to simmer took them off that's it put those in th in there uh, any longer than that they're gonna get tough on you and there's some of that turkey breast mm, that is melting your mouth The rice, still all individual grains. One of the great reasons I love using parboiled rice. Um, only about 20 minutes, okay? It's gonna come out perfect and loose every time. The Seminole Swamp season and other veg just come through, and man, those base scallops just, oh, just give the whole thing a beautiful sweetness.